Hello to all out there. I am Mr. H.M. Wogglebug, a T.E. <laughs> and I am very happy to meet you. I have a story to tell you. A story about a human child just like you. Sylvia has always been a timid and troubled child, and as shy as I've ever seen. But it shouldn't be unexpected when you consider her past. What do you mean? Didn't you know? She had a terrible mother who neglected her and allowed her to fall out of a window. That is why we have placed her in a room on the ground floor. How sad. Yes, and she is still a lonely child despite our stable environment. She seems unable to relate to other children. As you say, it is rather sad. She reminds me of myself at that age, living in my own imagination and books. We know what a special child she is, Miss Clisby. I know my wife and I can offer her a happy home. I believe you can. But remember, she is a very clever child, always kin to discovering new things. She surprises us every day with how much she notices around her that the other children seem to miss. What are you doing to those dumb flowers? We need to take care of them or they might fade away and die too soon. You're crazy. Flowers can't feel anything. Besides, you shouldn't be so close to the ground. There are bugs down there, you know. I'm not afraid of bugs. They won't hurt me. I respect them because they help the flowers to live. They know more about flowers than we do. Sylvia, you are so weird. You treat bugs like they are people. No wonder no one likes you. Hello, my little bug friend. You seem all alone. Do you need a friend? I do. But you're too tiny to be friends with. I'll let you go. Sylvia, there is someone I would like for you to meet. Say hello to Mr. Martin. H hello, Mr. Martin. Hello, dear. What have you got there? Honestly, it looks like a Papalanidae, most commonly known as the... Swallowtail butterfly. Very common, especially in America. Sylvia, I'm impressed. Yeah, I think he needs to be somewhere, so I should let him go. Well, why don't you run along and get ready for school? Yes, Miss Clisby. Good morning, children. I am Mr. Frank, and I'll be your substitute teacher while Mr. Carlos is away. I have here a magnifying glass. 
It has a single lens that is curved on both sides and thicker in the middle, causing the light to bend and thus enlarge things to our eyes. I'll be passing these out so you can use the magnifying glass as a recess and study up close any object you find that interests you. Afterward, you may draw a picture of what you studied. It can be anything you want to look at, like bugs? Yes, of course. Bugs are an excellent choice. What are you looking at? I'm looking at a bug woggling along. It's a woggle bug. Oh, a woggle bug. Cool, you discovered a new species of insect. Why did you do that? I don't want the woggle bug to get hurt or feel that his path is blocked. How do you know the woggle bug wants to get to any place at all? He must, or he wouldn't be out and moving. He also seemed sad and lonely and needed my help. This is what I studied with my magnifying glass. I discovered a new kind of bug. It is certainly unique. Do you know its name? It's a woggle bug. And how did you study it? I watched it woggling along and I cleared a path for it so it wouldn't get lost. And I stopped someone from stepping on it. Well now, Sylvie. I think you might be the girl who I've been saving this very book for. What a lucky day! You can take this home and keep it. This book is for you to write in anything you want to or draw anything you want to. I would recommend starting with drawings though. What is this key for? It's the key to all of your hopes and dreams, my dear. But you will know what is on locks when the time is right. Please, take it. Thank you. Wow, that's gorgeous. Hey, I want to talk to you about something. Okay. You know how we've been seeing Mr. Martin all those times, and how much you liked him. Oh yeah, Mr. Martin. I like him. He knows about bugs. He sure does. And you see, he really wants you to come home with him and his wife. They would really love to adopt you. Would you like that? I'd love it. Mr. Martin is here for you now. You've just been adopted. This will be the start of a beautiful friendship and a great adventure for us both. Are you ready, Sylvie? Sylvie, this is my wife, Ellen, your new mother. Hello. Can I call you Mom? Oh, my. Yes, yes. Nothing would make me happier. Well, if she gets called Mom, then I need to be called Dad. It's my first time being one, you know. So I just need to know who I am. It's my first time having a dad. Or a mom. Well, come in, you two. I've got a great dinner ready. Did you enjoy the pork chop? Oh, yes, ma'am. They were really good. How was school today? I found a new bug with a magnifying glass. I'm calling it a woggle bug. A woggle bug? I've never heard of those. What a great discovery. Well, Tara thought I was crazy to like bugs. Well, you're definitely not crazy. More like genius. Seems like you already understand how valuable bugs are to the world. That's amazing to me. Maybe you'll grow up to be a scientist like your dad. Harlan's right. You should be proud of your discovery. You need to learn about new things to grow. When I was your age, I wanted to find out about everything. Me too. I've always wished I could discover a new place to go, like in my favorite books. Wouldn't that be so cool? I always wanted to do the same. But then my third grade teacher would tell me, stop daydreaming. He'd be like, stop dreaming, dreamer. Ooh, like dreaming's a bad thing. Same. Mr. Carlos sometimes scolds me for being so fascinated with bugs in class. If he's not talking about bugs, I'm not really paying attention. You should never stop dreaming, though paying attention while in class is another thing.
Don't get her in trouble, Harlan. Okay, who wants cake? Time to celebrate Sylvie's arrival. Yay! You like this room of yours? I'm so glad. This room used to be bare of anything until you came along to it. These knickknacks and drapes used to just be lying in the attic. I'd like to explore the attic, if I could. It's just a dusty old attic, but I'm sure if you use your imagination, it could be anywhere you want it to be. Listen, there's no need to be afraid of anything. We all learn from facing our fears, even me. I know it's scary. I remember being scared as a boy. But you shouldn't listen to your doubts and fears. If I did, I wouldn't have become the smart, successful person I am now, would I? Well, now I have to leave for an important meeting. I'll see you later. Feel free to explore anywhere you like while I'm gone. Good afternoon to you. My name is Mr. H.M. Wogglebug, T.E. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. There is no need to be afraid of me, my dear. I like children. You're a Wogglebug? Yes, indeed. <laughs> and proud of it. Would you like to know what the initials at the start of my name mean? Yes, sir. Well... H.M. stands for Highly Magnified. <laughs> oh, and what about the T.E. at the end? Kind of you to ask. That stands for Thoroughly Educated. Wow, I see that. Where are you going, Mr. Wogglebug? Well, I am on my way to see the king and queen in the castle. Why? Because I want to join society, and what better way than to show their majesties that I can fit in? Why do you want to fit in? I am certain I can make people happy just by being me. After all, I am very smart and generous, having been taught by the great Professor Know-It-All. Who is Professor Know-It-All? That is a long story, but I will share it to help you understand. May I sit with you? Yes! Please. I confess, I wasn't always this big. I was born as a tiny bug. <laughs> but destiny had singled me out for a greater fate. You see, I grew up in a schoolhouse, so to speak. I was once a tiny bug so very small you couldn't see. I lived in a schoolhouse rug as warm and safe as I could be. Every day I'd sit and listen to Professor Know-It-All. I made it my special mission to remember and recall. Everything is always interconnected in some way. It's why it is called the life cycle and spinning universe. These values are all of which keeps these in balance. Knowing them by heart helps us to be good and intelligent people for all our lives. Dear Professor Know-It-All is a famous scholar, greatest in genoma, all agree. I learned so much it made me want to holler, but he never seemed to even notice me. Year in, year out, all of the children listened to what he had to say. I guess it wasn't too bewildering that one day destiny came my way. Look, children, I have found a Wogglebog. This is a very rare and interesting specimen here. Do any of you know what the Wogglebog is?
then I shall bring out my famous magnifying glass and project this insect onto our big screen so you can all see him. He is a unique specimen worth observing. That was when I learned I was a Wogglebug Professor know it all gave me that name. I was so surprised that I could only shrug. The children must have thought it was a game. This was the first time I saw the world. It all seemed so grand. I felt perplexed. As I watched the boys and girls, you won't believe what happened next. Behold, the Wogglebug. Woggle is an ancient genomic word for wisdom and compassion. I call this insect the Wogglebug because of the way it moves, going this way and that. I know because I created it. Why, thank you for telling me. I never knew that. Dear me, I hope I didn't scare any of you. I only want to be accepted into your world and be worthy of your respect and affection. Professor Know-It-All taught me so much, and now I just want to apply it. You are my proudest achievement, I assure you. You can walk upright, speak, think, and feel in ways only a human can. I would love to help to get you started in your new life. First, of course, we made sure that the girl was not hurt too badly, and then Professor Know-It-All dismissed them for the day. He took me by the arm, to which I acquiesced most gladly, and he led me to a tailor who lived not too far away. Paid the tailor to create this most resplendent clothing, so generous high society I could try to ascend. And although he warned I might be met with fear and loathing, I will never forget what he imparted at the end. You look just splendid. Remember always that you are thoroughly educated and this enables you to not just attain success but also accept any challenges which come your way. And never forget, you will always hold a special place in my heart. And so I left to go to the palace not knowing how my tale would end. So it was. I set out into the open world, just the size I am now, wanting with all my heart to be accepted for the bug I knew I could be. And that is my story. Now, by all means, tell me yours. What is your name? And where are you from? As I don't recall seeing you in Professor Know-It-All's classroom. My name is Sylvie Harnoys. I am not from around here. And I don't know how I came here. I found this key and arrived here. Why, this key has an intriguing symbol, and I think I know what it represents. Professor Know-It-All talked about that symbol in one of his lectures. Where did you find this? My substitute teacher, Mr. Frank, gave it to me. And then when I was in my attic, it made a painting glow and opened a door inside the wall. Then you must not be from around here at all. Do you think you are far away from your home? Yes, I am. I don't even know why I came here at all. I'm lost. Now, my dear, there's no need to fret. I promise if you stay by my side, I shall find a way for you to safely return to your home. Really? You can? Of course. I am not thoroughly educated for nothing, <laughs> you know. I believe this key may be a clue of how to figure things out. Really? Why? Because its symbol represents the seven living values of intelligence. Now, how do you spell your name? S-Y-L-V-I-E Precisely! The letters of your name nearly spell out the first of the letters of each word of the key's symbolism. It's true! Yes, indeed! <laughs> I recall Professor Noto saying the letters S-L-V-I, when combined together, can unlock a door to one's destiny, which means you too have one.
So, I would be honored if you will accompany me to the castle of Genoma. But why there? Because I feel for certain it is the first step in the right direction of finding out more clues in this puzzle of yours. The king and queen are noble and can help us both. Let's be on our way, shall we? I'm scared to go there. You'll have me with you. I am way too well educated to allow a little girl to come to any harm. Won't you trust me? I, I trust you. My dear Sylvie, I do believe this will be the start of a beautiful friendship for us, as well as a great adventure, for our paths in life seem to be connected in a wonderful way. They do, but why do you think so? When I left the tailor's home, Professor Noatol recommended I should go to the castle. I wanted to take the main road, but he told me to keep to the high road, and I took his word. Then I met you on my way. It's destiny we have met. <laughs> Do you suppose he knew about me, and that the king and queen know we are coming? Well... It wouldn't surprise me. Professor know it -all knows many secrets, including what his own name is. But I knew he must have wanted me to meet you and to be your friend. <laughs> you are my very first friend, Mr. Wogglebug. There are no six-foot-tall bugs where I come from, but I always wanted one as a friend. I really like them because they are so tiny but so important to nature. It's kind of you to appreciate us insects, but I'm sure you'll think more highly of me when you see my newly developed intellectual prowess. I am a very unique insect, you know. You must be the most unique bug there is in the whole world. That I am. That I am. <laughs> I am known as Mr. H.M. Wogglebug T. E. And I am as clever and unique as any Wogglebug can be. I am as smart as any man, and I'm as loyal, you will see. For I am the highly magnified Mr. Wogglebug T. E. I'm as refined as most gentlemen, and just as polite as I can be, for I am the one and only Mr. H.M. Wogglebug T.E. The wisest men shall hold me dear, my destiny will be so clear, I am as funny as can be, I'm Mr. Wogglebug T.E. Oh yes, it's true, a friend to you, a friend to you, and just as lovable, yes, that's me, can't you see, though I am a big bug, I could use a big hug. There's nothing to fear, so give me a great big hug from you. I haven't had a hug since I left the tailor's house. I find giving hugs are my favorite kind of manners, I think. <laughs> Your Majesties, I am Mr. H. M. Wogglebug, T.E., and this is Sylvie. She has come from beyond Genoma with... This key. This key bears the symbol of the seven living values of intelligence. I am aware. How did you come of this key? And what brings you here? Your Majesty, if I may, the key brought her here against her wishes. We are hoping you might be able to help her to get back home. Ah, interesting indeed. We can possibly be of some assistance. But, at the moment, there is another important matter at hand. Your Majesty? As you may know, we are holding a meeting today to decide which of our wisest nobles and advisers are to be appointed as our personal assistants. There is a gnome trying to destroy our kingdom, and I need special counsel to fight against him. That sounds awful. Terrible, actually. That's why this decision must be made soon, and based upon which of my nobles has the best of all the seven living values of intelligence. Using the symbols, 
like on the key's handle. You know of them? That is why I am here, actually. I'd like to be considered for counsel. Uh, we have enough nobles already to shift through for counsel. Yes, but Professor Know-It-All sent me. Wait. You mean you know Professor Know-It-All? He taught me all I know. <laughs> well then, Mr. Wogglebug. We invite you and your guest to stay amongst us and snooze with our counsel. Any friend of Professor Know-It-All is a friend of ours. If they approve of you, we'll consider your proposal. Thank you, your majesties. I'd be delighted. Come on, Sylvie. Let's go show them all how smart I am. Trust me, there is no need to fear, Sylvie. These folk are not much different from us. Greetings to all of you, my good fellows. I am Mr. H.M. Wogglebug, T.E. I am a very versatile insect of the highest degree. How do you do? I am Dr. Hoolan. I come from a long branch off of many wise owls who have been advisors to kings and queens' courts for generations. I see. It must be a hoot for you, my good sir. <laughs> yes, it is. I was going to say the same about you, also. Hello, I am Lord Sprague. I am an old goat, but come from a long line of nobles that have sprouted from the first of the advisors of Genomus Monarchy. How splendid! I hope we never have to butt heads. <laughs> Hello to you, Mr. Wogglebug. I am Sir Reynolds. I am from a proud flock of high lords and nobles of Genoma. We Reynolds have always had the word of the land under our wing. How splendidly you have hatched from your nest, my fine sir. <laughs> yes, indeed. You certainly are versatile with much, as you said. Yes, indeed I am. Thank you. I am able to notice double meanings within words, just as much as I can notice the symbolism in letters of words. Come off it. How can there be symbolism within letters and not just words or names? Rubbish. Not so. I mean, I know there is symbolism in the letters of the first word of the seven living values of intelligence, just as a single symbol holds them all together. The seven living values of intelligence almost spell out my name. My name is Sylvie. Oh yes, indeed. This is Sylvie Harnois. I am helping her to find how to open a door to get her home. She brought a key with the symbol of S-L-V-I on it. Can you at least recite a phrase from the first letters of all of the ones in the girl's name? Certainly I can. Seven years learning. Vital. Information. Everywhere. Very well done. I love it! Excellently put, I suppose. Now, I suppose you may have heard of old prophecies of this kingdom, have you not? Why, yes. Professor Know-It-All told of many of them. Then do you know of the one about the enchanted forest? There has been a legend of ancient that says an heiress of the magic of the place will bring together all of it to create a living tree human being there from all life. Yes, I do indeed remember hearing of such an ancient prophecy about the enchanted forest. But of what significance do you think it has to do with us? Who can say? I would advise you to go and find out how much truth there is about it, if you can. Very well, we shall. I am sure those fellows have faith in me to seek the information they require, but where do I start? Look! That's the same painting that brought me here! Oh, my word! Sylvie, I do believe this brings me to a most startling conclusion. Come on, we must tell the others at once. I swear to you the Wogglebug should never have come here to join us. He should know there is no place for his kind among us, he being what he is. I second your speech. He is good for nothing but a fool. If he had any intelligence, he wouldn't have come. Right you are. If he knows what is right for all, he will count himself out of meeting the qualifications of a respected personage at all. What is this? Water? 
is dripping from between my eyelids. <laughs> You're crying. <laughs> I don't understand. I I just don't understand. I thought they would like me. What is wrong with me? Nothing at all, Mr. Wogglebug. Then I am so confused by the things they said about me. There must be some way to really prove to them that I am worthy of their respect. Well, why don't you tell them about the seven living values of intelligence? I've tried that. But you didn't tell them that SLVIE will lead them to unlock the door to their destiny and help the kingdom from evil. Of course. <sighs> I should have remembered. Come with me, for the monarchs must hear what I know I can do. Your Majesties, I beg of you to postpone this meeting. I believe I have discovered clues of how this matter can be solved. What have you discovered? The prophecy of the Enchanted Forest may be true and is coming into fruition now. I wish to go there now with Sylvie to see if I'm right. If what you say is true, Mr. Wogglebuck, someone must go forth to the Enchanted Forest. We'll send one of our entrusted servants. No, it must be us. After all, it was Sylvie who was brought here and who was entrusted with the key. If we can get the key to the tree in the Enchanted Forest, we may be able to help the kingdom, Your Majesty. Very well. Do what you need, but be careful. We shall wait two days until we hear word back from you. I trust you, Mr. Wogglebug. You may go forth to the Enchanted Forest and do justice to your degree of being thoroughly educated. I will do my best, Your Majesty. Why are you so sure this is what you need to do? And why would I have anything to do with this? There's too many coincidences. Your name practically spells out the symbol of the key that brought you here. And, of course, the painting in the library with the photo of the living tree being the same as the one in your attic. It'll all make sense soon. I trust the seven living values of intelligence. So what the heck are the seven living values of intelligence you all keep talking about? I'm so lost. If I remember Professor Know-It-All correctly, they are of honesty, kindness, courtesy, loyalty, courage, perseverance, and humility. The last holds the others together. Okay, so how will you know them when you have found them? Don't worry, when one of them manifests in you, you will know. Oh. Okay. You are afraid you will fall off the bridge while crossing it. I see. Then I shall guide you across it so you won't fall. Just follow my voice and keep looking up and we shall cross safely. It's not to be a daddy day. Perfectly fine for a walk or going out to play. When the sun is high and clouds are flown away, that's a dilly dally day. Dilly day, dally do. Yummy, 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 lay. Dilly day, dally do. And now you can open your eyes because we're through. Dilly day, dally do. Yummy, 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 lay. Dilly day. is the Enchanted Forest. I trust that you have never seen any place like it before, dear Sylvie. It's so beautiful. I love it. I should certainly think so, too. <laughs> I remember learning all about this place in Professor Know-It-All's schoolroom. Yet, it seems all the more glorious when it's all around me. I'm sure you and I will find all of the many flora life forms I learned about from before. There should be many colorful and delightful flowers around here. 
I heard they are like real people. <laughs> Why, just look at those trees. They are so big and majestic like monuments. They have an aura of life and wisdom, don't they? Being here so many years. Why, thank you. You are standing on my left root. Oh, I do beg your pardon. Why, you must be of the wise old oak trees I've heard so much about. It's a pleasure to meet you at last. Wise old oaks? Tree beings who live and speak as they do because they were planted with the ashes from the remains of the best and wisest people and creatures in Genoma's history. They are markers that whisper the words of wisdom that the beings they come from lived by. They are most vitally important aspects of nature. Their words are always to be trusted. We are pleased to make your acquaintance. I must say that you are the largest, most intelligent of all insects I've known of. And I've known a lot of them in my timeline. The pleasure is really all mine. <laughs> I'm the one and only highly magnified and thoroughly educated Mr. Wogglebug. Also, this is my dear friend Sylvie. She loves nature too. All of life is a quest for education, to find one's own answers. You are lucky to have a child accompanying you. Speaking of answers... We've come to your forest because we're interested in learning more about a prophecy. What sort of prophecy? For we know many. One that I believe has to do with the greatest tree in the forest being able to give birth to a living tree person with combined powers of the forest's magic. What truth is there to it? There is much truth to it, but it can only come true in dire need to do so, which is why I've been feeling the time may have come for it. Because of the arrival of that conniving and Tebow. Who, may I ask, is this Antibo? The wickedest old gnome you could ever have the displeasure of meeting. Well, I've met him. He wants to ruin all of nature in this forest by bringing a new order to it that is way too unnatural for its own good, or lack of. That Antibo is barking mad. It seems like he must be. I'd like to see if I might reason with him. I'm afraid the powers of reason are not great enough for Antibo as he is. Not just a gnome, but a gnome priest, and far greater powers are needed to stop him. I am afraid the only one we believe we know of a power strong enough to thwart his schema is Elysia, the fairy queen mother of the elements. Who is that? She is a powerful fairy. She rules the enchanted forest and is even more clever than me. We must see her. May we see her? Of course, first you must travel to the village of the forest elves. They are the lawyer keepers of the woodland magic. We would have gone ourselves, but well, you know, lack of feet to walk. So, tell me, which way to the village of the elves? Just try to hide. You are on the right path. Thank you. It looks like we're almost there. I've always wanted to see real elves. I've read about them. I've heard Professor Know-It-All tell that the elves are the enchanted forest's most prominent residents, and they look after all the flora. Why, look! It's a Papillionidae. A swallowtail butterfly? Just like the one I found in my own world? Very observant of you, my dear. I always did love butterflies, for they are the link between the earth and the air, between nature and humanity, and... Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm... <coughs> I'm and this teleportation magic is like murder on my senses. Are you not the gnomic priest we heard about who wants to cast a new order to the laws of nature or something? Of course. Who else would I be? When I have my will over this enchanted forest, all of the trees, flowers, Plants and all of the elemental surrounding will be converted to my new order, whether they like it or not. But why would you want to do that? 
because this place has gone on as it always has for far too long and it's time for a change and the one to change it must be someone who has always seen it differently that someone is me but what have you got against the enchanted forest being the way it is everything I hate flowers and anything pretty. I hate wise old oaks and their insistent mutterings. And I especially hate bugs. But what did any of those things ever do to you? They are the reasons I was exiled from my home, you insufferable cockroach. Do not refer to me in such inconsiderate ways, sir. Oh, well, I apologize. I meant to refer to you as a dung beetle. Be careful with your speech, if you please, for I am the one and only highly magnified and thoroughly educated Wogglebug. What does it matter? You are only as smart as you say you are. But no matter how smart, you are no match for me. But what can you do to him? Well, he wouldn't want to cross me, or I might have to do something like this. How could you? It was easy. Look, I'd love to continue to chat, but I have of grave matters to attend to in the Enchanted Forest for now. I'll see you there. Bye-bye. <laughs> mm, gotta fix that. Must get some cough syrup. That darn smoke. I can see clearly how evil he is. He must be stopped. This poor creature has been unjustly smited. Maybe the elves can help us. I hope so. Haven't you ever seen a short person perform magic before? No. I can't recall that I ever have. But, if you don't mind my asking, what sort of magic were you attempting to perform? My name is Christoph, and I was merely attempting to make the flower babies happy so that they would dance in the sunshine and grow well. Who are you, anyway? And what are you doing here? I am Mr. H. M. Wogglebug, T.E., and this is Sylvie. We have come to your village because we have been sent by King Ethano on a quest. Have you heard about this gnomic priest called Antibo? Have I? I wish I hadn't. He has crazy ideas. He thinks his new order is a greater way of making things grow. When us elves know the truth is the natural laws. They are natural for the right reasons. I couldn't agree with you more. That is why we are here now. We were sent to help you stop Antibo and save the Enchanted Forest. Save the Enchanted Forest? I wish I could. But for all my knowledge of elvish magic, I cannot even teach flower babies to dance with happiness. Oh dear, I wish I could help you. Maybe you can, Mr. Wogglebug. How do you mean, Sylvie? With the sound of your voice. In my world, some people believe that music helps plants grow. Sing to them. Oh, why, of course. After all, music is the universal language of happiness. <laughs> Very well. I shall help you to work your magic, my good elf. Very well. Just do your best with your voice, and I'll do my best with my magic and conduct the flowers. Won't you grow for me, little flower? From within, you must feel the power. You must feel deep inside that you can grow. Grow, little flower, go. Go with the flow. Grow to sun. 
Dance to your fun, grow into your stance, grow with your siblings, dance. Please grow, little flower baby, grow and you can go so high, maybe. Feel love inside you and all around you. Grow with love and you rise above. Won't you grow now, my little flower? And feel your lovely power. Thank you so much, Mr. Wogglebug. I now fully understand the importance of using my mind and my magic together. Of course, it all goes together in the right way. We meet again, Antibo. How dare you interfere with my new world order with your stupid singing and dancing flower babies and you wretched little elf. Oh no, please, Antibo. I'm sorry. Sorry? When I have control over this enchanted forest, all the trees, flowers, and plants will be converted to my new order, whether they like it or not. Then you'll really be sorry! Oh no! It's so horrible. It's so unnatural. You must leave nature alone to be allowed to grow and flourish in its own right ways, just as it's always done. How dare you tell me what to do? I shall be rid of the lot of you troublemakers. Watch your back, because I'll be coming for you. Oh dear, I do believe he must have meant what he said. We must gather my fellow elves together to rally against him. I quite agree. We must rally together everyone, and all must be alerted of the danger. As loyal forest dwellers, we strive to defend our native home. Elf, of course, but we alone may not be powerful enough against Antibo. We must rally the other known guardians of the forest, so the prophecy may be fulfilled. I fear gathering all the guardians of the forest might be easier said than done. How do you mean? What I mean is... The Guardians of the Forest may not be so easy to gather together. The Four Beasties, for instance, are incredibly shy. The Pixies, well, the Pixies, as everyone knows, prefer not to leave the safety of their caverns. Especially now with that menace, Antibo abroad! Then there's the fact that the Lake Dwellers cannot leave their watery home. And of course, we Elves are not the most easy to get along with, so we're not best suited to bring them all together. If I may say so, I myself happen to be thoroughly educated. I'd be honored to meet with these other guardians of the forest for you. I'm sure it would be no trouble for me. Very well. You may go and find the beasties in the deep wood. Just beyond that, you will find the caverns of the pixies. The great lake, which is home to the lake folk, is not far away from there. We mustn't forget to consult with Her Majesty Alicia. Of course I know. May we please see the Fairy Queen Mother of the Elements in the Enchanted Forest? Did someone mention my name? Greetings, O oh wise mother of all around us. Dear me, this is quite sudden. Greetings, wise Fairy Queen Mother of all elements around us. I'm so pleased to meet you. Your Majesty, you're powerful. Can you take on Antibo yourself? No, Sylvie. I wish it were that simple. However, his power for evil is so strong, it can hurt all of the righteous, including me. But as long as I am hidden with the elves, I am not in danger. I am afraid you are the only ones to carry this burden of Antibo. You are the chosen ones. Chosen for what? I never volunteered for anything. Oh, sweet child. The choice was not up to you. But you hold everything in you to defeat him. But you hold everything in you to defeat him. 
you two will unite all the elements of the forest and bring forth the Guardian of Nature to defeat Antibo and his evil plan. Mr. Wogglebug too? Both of you. You, Sylvie Harnois, are vital to your world and ours in more ways than even I know. And you, Mr. Wogglebug, your importance is as great as your wisdom, as you will soon come to learn. I would certainly like to believe so. If it pleases you, I shall do everything I can to enable the Enchanted Forest to triumph over this mad gnome scheme, so that life may go on as it should. The trust of the whole forest is with you both. Now your path is set. You must gather the powerful folk of the forest and demonstrate unto them the importance of the seven living values of intelligence. Do you think you can do that? Of course. Never fear. We shall not let you down. I have faith you will not. Why, Sylvie, whatever is the matter, my dear? I'm scared, Mr. Wogglebug. I'll never be able to do as she says. I'll let the whole forest down. There's no way I can defeat that nasty, hideous, ugly, mean old gnome. You saw him. Why, Sylvie, how can you say such things? Dear child, Antibo may be a powerful sorcerer, but we have right on our side and the knowledge of the seven living values of intelligence. That is correct. And considering the importance of the mission, it is my belief that Christoph should accompany you on it. But why me? Because you, my young friend, have in you great potential to succeed. But we have to find the Pixies, and you know how they are about ourselves. Yes, I know. And that is the more reason why you should be there to find them. For they must know from a young elf like you why they are so important to our ways. I don't like this but I will certainly do my best. That's the spirit. Go forth. We wish you the very best on your journey. Thank you, good elven leader. Sylvie and I will do our very best to stop Antibo and save you all and the enchanted forest. The fairy queen mother must really trust us, or she wouldn't have sent us on so important a quest. I shall succeed and convince the nobles I'm worthy of greatness. But what could she have meant by me being as vital to this world as I am to my own? I'm sure she must have had good reason. After all, you are a most unique girl with an admirable respect for nature and its elements. Things that are most important here. Christoph, why are you so worried about finding the Pixies? Us elves have a history of not getting along with the Pixies. Why not? It has to do with our differences in magic and how we tend to the forest. There have been instances in which we have played tricks on each other. That does indeed sound like a problem. But for the sake of saving the forest from Antibo, you must unite your strengths. The Fairy Queen Mother wouldn't have wanted it if it wasn't necessary to defeat Antibo. I suppose you're right. Mr. Wogglebug, may I ask you something? Certainly, my dear. Why are you so sure it will be easy to stop Antibo? Sylvie, you must trust me on this. Antibo is obviously no match for me and my intellectual prowess. Could you not tell from before? I'm sorry to question you. It's just that Antibo kind of scares me. Why, he's nothing to fear with me around, I assure you. I want to believe you. It's just that I've watched a lot of cartoons that had bad guys like him in them. What exactly are cartoons? It's TV. Well, I am sure TV is nothing compared to my T-E. <laughs> you may be right, Mr. Wogglebug. Cartoons have got none of the real magic of Genoma. Antibo won't be easy to defeat as long as he is so power mad. Why is he the way he is anyway? Antibo comes from a tribe of gnomic people north of the forest. They aren't bad. But Antibo went bad due to losing his mind somehow. He craves power and will stop at nothing to get it. And since he went into the servitude of an evil wizard, he's been as worse as can be. I see. All the more reason to defeat him. Now, come with me. We must find the pixies. It's so dark in here. 
No need to be afraid of the dark. Just hold my hand. I'm right here. of importance. Have you now? What can we do for you? We've heard you rarely leave your dwellings, but this is a quest of great importance. You must join forces with the other guardians of the forest so that it may be saved. Because no matter how small you are, you have great power in you and are vital in saving the forest with the power of your pixie dust. Do you really think so, young elf? Yes, I do. My name is Kristoff, and I was sent by my elders to find you in hopes we could unite to save the forest from Antibo. <laughs> I'm allergic, I just have a sensitive feeling to my nose. <laughs> to be sure, we thank you for making the effort to come to us. We are glad to know that we are needed outside of our cavern. You are quite welcome. Now will you please excuse us? We must get on our way to see the forest guardians. Wait! I want to go with you, for I am sure I could provide you with enough pixie dust to survive the journey. You did wonderful in there, Sylvie and Christoph. I'm glad the Pixies agreed to join forces. They are sure to have power over Antibo with their Pixie magic. <laughs> oh, pardon me. It's getting late. We'll have to find a place to sleep soon. Follow me. I know the perfect spot. And I will light the way. I'm no doubt vital to our survival. I wouldn't say that exactly. For us elves have always had the strongest of magic in the forest. So you say. But you have always been overconfident with it in taking reckless risks. While we pixies have always been careful and only take a risk when need be. Still, that's no excuse for your kind to play tricks on us. It's only for a bit of fun. And it must have been you who disrupted my maple tree growth practice last month. Cool it, you two. You both have magic in you that is valuable to you. Like the Elder said, Kristaff, you and the Pixie need to get along. But how can we? Why don't you try putting your magic together with something? Try these flowers over here. Very well. These flowers look like they could use some Elven magic. Very good, Kristaff. Flowers do need rain to grow well. They also need sun. Our pixie dust is practically sunlight. Let me show you. Excellent. <laughs> Pardon me again. Mr. Wogglebug, are you sure you're not allergic to pixie dust? Well, perhaps just a tad bit. You pixies may have great powers of your own, but at least us elves have great powers that no one can be allergic to. Why, I never. Oh dear, can't you just get along? I'm tired. I need to rest. Help! It's a mushroom monster! Thank 
you, Pixie. You saved my life. That is what Pixie does for. I suppose it is. And you were right all along, Pixie Leader. I guess I owe you an apology. Apology accepted. You just have a lot to learn about us, Pixies. I guess I do. And luckily, I'm still young enough to do so, like the Elder said. I'm so glad for you, too. <laughs> you know, for your sake, Mr. Wogglebug, we should go our separate ways from you for now. I and the Pixie Leader shall return to my village, and the Elders shall be pleased with me. You may be right. We'll meet again at the end of the journey, of course. Yes, we will. Farewell. Here is a very nice place to sleep. Come here, Sylvie. Mr. Wogglebug, I'm glad the elves and the pixies are getting along now. So am I, my dear. I really am. This adventure has been like living in one of my fairy tales in my favorite books. I just hope all turns out right in the end like they do in the books. Well, my dear, as I'd often heard Professor know it declare when he taught history, we always have the choice every day to make things turn out right. It is strictly up to us. I guess you're right. Good night, Sylvie. Good night. Oh, yes, my master. I have it all under control. Yes, master, of course. As we agreed on, I will take over the enchanted forest and ruin the prophecy. So then you will be able to take over Genoa and King Ethano's throne. Oh, no, master. That conniving giant bug and his little brat companion have no way of knowing what I have planned for them. I assure you, when the time comes, they will have never seen it coming. I just hope you will keep your promise to me, my lord. I will have revenge on those who rejected me from before, right? No need to worry, my dear. We don't have to be afraid of these beastie guardians of the forest. Are you sure? Of course. All we need to do is find them, and then just be polite and explain to them why they are needed. But how will we find them? My dear Sylvie, you must trust me, as I am a thoroughly educated Wogglebug and have superb hearing and thinking skills. <laughs> Pardon us. We hope we're not interrupting you. No, not at all. I was just practicing my bird calls. Listen. Nice. We're looking for the forest guardians. Would you happen to know where we could find them? What's it to you? We have important matters to discuss regarding the safety of the forest. We need to find all the guardians. I'm afraid there's only two in command, and you're looking at one of them. Where's the other? Sasquatch guards the West World, but I should warn you, he don't like visitors. Yo, Sasquatch! Pardon us, but we have visitors here with us who say they've got something important to talk about. Well, hell. is that right? How's it going, Grizz? Good to see you, old boy. Well, hello, new visitors. What brings you to our neck of the woods? Well, Mr. Sasquatch, I am Mr. H.M. Wogglebug. So you're a bug? Indeed, a Wogglebug. A woggle bug, eh? Never heard of you. Well, I'm rare. You hear that, Grizz? He's rare. I guess that makes us special then. Well, if you were to ask Professor Novatol, he'd say I was the most special bug there is. I see you like to read. Why are you scoping me out, son? You trying to case the joint? Quite the opposite. Actually, I've come to warn you. Ask you to join forces with us. An evil known priest going by the name of Antibo is attempting to ruin nature and corrupt the enchanted forest with his new world order. 
We call upon you, along with the other guardians of the forest, to help defend it against him. Wow. Here I was just reading my poetry and sitting under my poet tree, you see. And you come and lay this on me. I mean, we certainly appreciate your trust in us, but matters like this, we don't take lightly. We need to bring this to the attention of K-9 and Foxy. I'm already on it. May I assume that K-9 and Foxy are two more guardians? Not that it's any of your business, but, uh, yeah. You called? What's the emergency? We've got a situation. Seems something important came up. Oh yeah? What happened? All I know is this better be more important than me getting my nails painted. I've been waiting for that appointment all week. It certainly is important. And I'll be quick to explain now that all four of you are gathered together. So the bug seems to think there's a threat to the forest and only we can help. Mmm. I don't like the smell of it, boys. Smells like work, and I already got enough to do. Exactly. I'd much rather go back to my den, let the chipmunks finish my toenails, and call it a day. Excuse me if I may. Well, you might want to hear this. Apparently, Antibo has started some sort of power trip, and it's wreaking havoc on the Enchanted Forest. I knew he'd be troubled from the first time I caught wind of him. <sighs> Everybody wants to be the bad guy. Yes, he's a villain of the lowest regard. But if we can all just band together, I'm certain that we... <clears throat> As I was saying, if we band together... Band together? With who? The pixies and the elves. But we're comfortable here. Besides, what makes you think we can help? No one has ever come and asked us for help before. Listen, I understand your fears. But when I brought this up to the elves, mentioned that you could help. And with that help, I believe we can all make a difference for the forest. Trust me, as I trust in all of you. Great speech, bud. Believe me. We certainly appreciate your trust in us, but that's not going to mean much when everything goes down and there's pixie dust and elves flying every which way. And heaven forbid I break a nail. The gang is right. This is a lot to think about. We'll need to discuss it. Of course, I understand. If you'll excuse us, Sylvie and I will be on our way. Are you sure they will decide to come? I don't know, but there's not much else we can do now. But hope they will do the right thing. <laughs> Mr. Wogglebug, I saw someone come out from that tree. You did? But how can that be? There, look, can you see her? Oh, my word! I can see her! I do believe she must be a tree nymph, a spirit of the woods. How delightful that I can see them! <laughs> and so can I! You can see them too? I always believed that it was almost impossible for the eyes of humans to see the tree nymphs. You really are a most incredible child. Yes, indeed she is. Just as the Fairy Queen Mother predicted. Oh, hello there, dear spirit of the woods. It is a pleasure for us to meet you. Yes, it is. Indeed, the pleasure is all mine. For I have come to you now to inform you, dearest Sylvie, that you, an incredible child, as Mr. Wogglebug has said, for your love and understanding of nature, enable you to see and a speak to its spirit. Therefore, you have an important task to carry out 
to ensure the enchanted forest will be saved in the event you both succeed in your mission. I can see word travels fast in this forest. Our fame has preceded us. Really? What must I do? You must go to get the heart of the forest and place it in the hollow trunk of the biggest and oldest tree located at the forest's edge. When you find the heart, which looks like a red stone, you will find it guarded by a spell that the forest has placed on it for protection purposes. To break the spell, you must speak the right words to the forest openly and then take the stone. If it turns into a rose, you will have succeeded. What are the words I must say? I cannot tell you them, for you must feel them from your own heart when the time comes. I shall help, Sylvie, if I can. Very good, Mr. Wagabut. I wish you the best of luck. Farewell. Well, I must say this forest is filled with many surprises and many wonderful creatures. <laughs> oh no! Now what am I going to do? What's the matter? Don't you want to succeed at the task the tree nymph gave us? Of course I do. I just don't know how. Why? All we have to do is get to the heart and make the spirit of the forest to listen to you. And that is what I don't know how to do. How can I get something so huge as a forest to listen to me? I can never get anyone to ever listen to me where I came from. Dear me, you are certainly someone who should be listened to. If only you knew it. You are shy now. But I believe you will be listened to if you just believe you can be. How can I? By just believing in yourself, just as I believe in you. What do you mean? I mean you do believe in the things you see around you, don't you? Yes. And so you believe in me and that I can succeed in what I want to achieve also, right? Yes, of course I do. Well... I believe in you just as much. I don't see how anyone could believe in me. Well, for one thing, just look at everything you've done so far on this adventure. Like what? You were afraid to cross that bridge, and yet you did it. Because you gave me the courage. My dear, courage is not something that is given. Courage is inside all of us. I just helped you to discover the courage inside you, and you did all the rest. My dear Sylvie, you are much braver and more resourceful than you give yourself credit for. I am fully confident that when the time comes, you will find a way to get the forest to listen to you. So you think the tree nymph's plan may really work? I hope so. All you really need to do is remember all the things we have done so far. Your courage and resourcefulness, and how I've managed to succeed in rousing the creatures of the forest. I will admit, whether they will listen to me in the end is up to them. But I have tried my best, just as you will try your best when the time comes. Which is the point? You trust in my point, don't you? Of course. I always will. I thought so. <laughs> now come, we must complete our journey. Hello there, good dwellers of the lake. You all look as beautiful as your surroundings. I am Mr. H. M. Wogglebug T.E., and this is my friend Sylvie. Why, thank you, good sir. Do you and the little girl wish to come into our aquatic home? Oh, gracious, no. <laughs> I can't swim. Neither can I. Oh, then why have you come to see us? We don't have many visitors. We have come to you because the enchanted forest is in danger of being ruined by a crazed gnomic priest named Antibo. A time will come soon when your magic will be needed to combine with the other figures of the forest to save it. We would like to come, but fear we cannot leave our lake, for we belong to it and our spirits connect to it. We especially dare not leave the lake in times of danger in the forest beyond. We'd be fish out of water. Dear me! 
This is a problem. What a cute starfish. Thank you. He's actually my gatekeeper of my soul essence and all that protects me, as long as I'm with the spirit of the lake. What does that mean? It means he's magical. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Claude Stein. Why, of course. I should have remembered. The starfish are known for their great powers, so they at least may be able to come and represent the lake dwellers. But can our starfish make it on land and without us with them? I suppose we can, at least briefly. If it's very important, as he said. Still, we need to think of a plan of how to make it by ourselves. Actually, I know of some elves who may be able to help and transport you little fellows quite nicely and easily, if we could arrange it. But still, will we be all right? Of course. With me here to protect you and the forest, I believe Antibo will find it very difficult to impose his new order on nature. Well, just say about that. Antibo, what are you doing here? You have caused enough pain already. Wasn't the harm and suffering you created in the elves' village enough to satisfy your evil appetite? Must you also threaten these poor, defenseless creatures as well? Why... How could I possibly threaten these poor creatures when they have you here to protect them, when you are supposed to be such a smart bug? That is true! I shall do everything in my power to stop you from changing the natural elements of this forest to your own twisted desires. Bah! You overgrown anthropomorphic insect. How could anyone stop me? I will run this forest elements to my own grand design and there's nothing you can do to stop me. I think you forgot. I am a highly magnified and thoroughly educated Wogglebug. My word, Mr. Wogglebug. You have a profoundly serious problem with your pride, if I do say so myself. How could I possibly have any problems with myself? After all, I really am all that I say I am, if I do say so myself. <laughs> How dare you be so imprudent? I'll have you know I studied for this position for many years and have finally earned it. And I'll have you know, I also studied for my position for years under the teachings of the most famous scholar of Genoma, Professor Know-It-All. Professor Know-It-All? Why that old scoundrel must have returned? Here I thought he just gave up and left after he realized how silly he was. Just a minute! You cannot ever talk that way about Professor Know-It-All in front of me! Can I not? What else can I not do in front of you? Mr. Wogglebug, he's trying to trick you. Fear not, my dear. There is nothing he can do to trick someone as educated as I. Bah! You are worthless and helpless before me, just as all in this forest who challenge my new order of nature. What little you think of me shows how little you think. I warn you, I have the power to make you and your new friends regret those words. Your power does not frighten me, and you cannot do anything to these lake dwellers as long as I am here to protect them. We'll see about that. Misery, doom, and despair. Oh no! I can't move myself at all! I'm stuck also! Help me! Now look what you made me do! But you made me do it! You dared me to, or else I never would have felt the need to do it. But this is no new order of nature as you claim. You have broken the very laws of nature. Without water, these poor creatures will die. But there's plenty of water. Behold! You see, they will not die. They will, however, remain there where they belong, as I intend them to. You see, I have not broken the laws of nature. I have merely bent them to my will. 
How could you do such a horrible thing? Because, you stupid girl, I have the power to. I cannot be stopped, least of all by a bug who puts on fancy clothes and fancy airs and thinks himself better than me. But this is only a foreshadowing of what is to come. There is a great storm brewing, one of my own design, and you are all powerless to stop me. Forest dwellers, please, do not panic. All is not lost. Be assured I shall defeat this mad gnome with my knowledge of the truth. I will stop his plans, and I'll be worthy of your respect. This is my moment to prove myself. This will lead to much darker territory. Please, will you hold my hand? Of course, we've come too far to turn back now. I can get us through all that comes, Sylvie. You trust me, don't you? I'll always trust you. These mocking trees must be the malformed versions of the wise old oaks I've heard about. Let's hope their bite is not as nasty as their barks. <laughs> See? Even now, I can make you smile. Give it up. You will not survive. Thoroughly educated, you are not. Thoroughly ignorant, you are. Or else you would just give up and surrender. How dare you make this little girl your victim? Is she special to you or something? Don't listen, my dear. Ignore them. We must ignore them. Good. If I were the king, I'd throw you both in the dungeon because just wait until he hears about your failure. I'm absolutely disgusted with you for ruining any chance you had to prove yourself worthy of being otherwise. I mean, how could you have just assumed losing your temper at Antibo, just like you wanted you to, would help anything? Now when it comes to who makes the king's list, you're all but doomed. And it's all your fault, don't you know? Oh, Sylvie, it's all true. What they mock me with is true. I never should have let my anger and pride get the better of me, even if it was Antibo. You mustn't give up. Not now, not ever. Like you said, we've come so far already. We must go on. Leave him there, child. Leave him be and go on without him. Listen to them, Sylvie. Go on without me and save yourself, while you still can at least. I'm done for. No. No, I can't. I could never leave you here all alone. I need you. I'll always need you. So does the Enchanted Forest. We're all in this together. Nonsense. Leave him be, Sylvie. He will bring nothing but misfortune upon the Enchanted Forest if he goes on. How can I deny them? I can. Mr. Wogglebug, I love you, and I believe in you. I believe you are good enough to save the Enchanted Forest. No, you, must believe in you yourself. mustn't believe in yourself, or you'll just mess up again. So what if you made a mistake once before? It doesn't mean you are a failure. Everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> but... I should never make mistakes with my education, but those poor mermaids are suffering because of it. <laughs> it wasn't your fault, Mr. Wogglebug. Antibo tricked you, just like he tricked the elves. Oh, please. You must get up and move on. You know you would say the same thing to me if I was in your place right now. No, no, no. You'll only prove you're too proud for your own good. <laughs> he's right. <laughs> he's right. No. Don't you see, Mr. Wogglebug? My father always said if you believe in yourself, you can do anything you want to. Those mean trees words can't hurt you when you know you're in the right. And I love you. Come on. Uh, you're right. Of course. I love you too, Sylvie. Thank you. And let's get on. We've got a forest to save. Try singing your song from when we cross the bridge. 
it gives courage. You, Sylvie Harnoy, are a very bad, bad girl. You don't deserve to get out of here. Be silent. All of you are barking mad. I know you are with Aunt Tebow. Leave us alone. It's not Kimmy a dead. It's not Kimmy a Danny day. Perfectly fine for a walk or going out to play. When the sun is high and clouds are blown away. That's a dilly dally day. Dilly a day. Dally a do. Yolly, 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 lay. Dilly a day. Dally a do. You are the most pathetic, irritating, unhelpful abomination to the forest. Your insults may be rude, but they have no effect on me, for they are too wooden and stiff. <laughs> Thinking yourself so smart and clever and good. <laughs> Seriously, your insults are as stiff as a board, and I'm board stiff. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, am I ever relieved to be away from them? I think I almost lost my wits for a moment there. We're fine now. I hope we come to no more trouble. I'm sure we won't. And even if we do, I think I've gained enough insight from experience to outwit trouble. Mr. Wogglebug, you were so great back there. I knew I was right to believe in you. Thank you, my dear. But remember, we are not there yet. For we still need to defeat Antibo. You must get to the heart of the forest and take it to the great tree. Oh, that's right. You do believe in yourself enough to think you can succeed, don't you? Yes, I do now. Good. Now, come, my dear, for we must get to the great human tree being and awaken it. And all the rest of those living the forest must also be there. Do you think they will? Dear me, I hope so. Everyone's lives depend on everyone, it seems. Hello, elves. It's a pleasure to see you all again. The same to you, too. Why, what about us? Oh, but of course it's a pleasure to see you again also. Thank you for coming. It's nice to see you all here now. But I just wish we were seeing more. What do you mean? Is it too dark to see us or something? Oh, so you did come after all? Oh my, I must say, it is truly a great pleasure to see the four of you here also. I must admit, I am rather surprised, but delighted by it. <laughs> well, we all discussed it and came to an agreement. Of course, it's got to be all for one, or one for all. You know the old saying, united we stand, and divided we we fall. That's right. And we want you to know we are with you all the way. All of you. Thank you. It means a lot to me. I just wish the starfish could have made it. Are those the starfish? The starfish. They're okay again. Why, it's the fairy queen mother of the elements. You've come to us just in time, and saved our little friends also, I see. Of course I did. You've done well, Mr. Wogglebug. And you too, Sylvie. It is a very good thing all of you are gathered here together now. You know we would do anything for you, great mother of our elements. Of course I know. Of course I know. The starfish are all right now, and they are of as great importance as all the rest of you. I may have unfrozen them, but to unfreeze anything else and save the forest, we must overthrow Antibo, and to do so, we must succeed at bringing the great tree being to life, and bring forth the living tree person from it. True. No, Fairy Queen, when does the real magic power begin? Right about now, for here he comes.
halt, Antibo, for that will be quite far enough. Well, now, what a sight to behold. We've grown tired of your wickedness. You shall be punished for the crimes of unlawful imprisonment of the inhabitants of the lake, the disturbance of our peaceful forest, and terrorizing our guests with threats of malice. We've grown tired of your wickedness. We've grown tired of your wickedness. What say you to these accusations before punishment is dealt? Listen to your weak mother, you pathetic rodents. All of you are no match for me. <laughs> Stop your behavior, wretched gnome. I'll fight you. I'll eat you. Really? And my dear Furball, how do you intend to do that? You fools! This is my forest. I've been kind enough to let you all reside here. But in your ignorance, you've continued to claim it for your own. Madness! We are children of this forest. Birthed here, raised here, why those oaks watched us grow. You and Tebow merely stumbled upon it and won't leave. We have known the trees from acorns. Foolish! See, again, you beasts fail to realize that I'm the one that's kept you safe. No, it's you they needed safety from. Your arrogant delusions of grandeur have driven you stark raving mad. Put a cork in it, sister. Sylvie, quickly now. You must get the heart of the wood to the great tree beam. Misery, doom, and despair! Oh no, and Kibo, you horrible demon. How could you do this? Like I said before, it was easy, and she made me do it. You all did. <laughs> oh dear. Good forest dwellers, you must help Sylvie with your magic. Now, please. Right away. Oh no. Pixies, come here at once, please. At your service! <laughs> oh dear, this is worse than I thought. Oh no, can nothing be done to restore her? Nothing. Now you see how stupid you were all along to think you could defeat me? Oh, my dear Sylvie! <laughs> how could this have happened to you? It's all my fault. If only I hadn't been so sure of myself. I want you to know I love you, my dear. You are my friend, and I love you far more than I could ever love myself. Sylvie! I'm all right, Mr. Walkabug. You saved me. I did, but how? You have a little bit of magic in yourself also, Mr. Wogglebug. But this is impossible. How could... Sylvie, I think you know what has to come now? Do I Sylvie, ever? I think... I believe in all of the good creatures in the enchanted forest who were chosen to protect it in the heart of it. They are as vital to keeping the magic alive as any other creature to it could be. So the heart will depend on them for it to be trusted in the right hands. I believe you can be trusted with it. Well said, Sylvie. The human tree being trusts you now. Well said and done, my dear. I knew I was right to believe in you. I really couldn't have done it. 
or said it right if it hadn't been for you, you know? actually brought the great oak back to life. It was you who were chosen to bring the great oak back to life. I couldn't have done it without Mr. Wogglebug and the help of all of you. We are family, Sylvie. We all played a part. But you held the key. Key? It's a good thing that wasn't lost. How did you know about the key? I believe it's time we informed you of our secret revelations. Professor Know-It-All, what a pleasant surprise. That's Mr. Frank who gave me the key. Well done, my friends, well done. But Professor, how are you here? How did you know we? How is this possible? My dear precious Wogglebug, we have some pleasant explanations. We? I'm confused. The Fairy Queen and I have been discombobulated on how we could bring peace and harmony back to this enchanted forest. After I created you, knowing the impact you would and could bestow on anyone you came in contact with, in my travels I came in touch with Sylvie. When she approached me with the earnest desire to help a creature that to most was insignificant, but to her she saw its purpose. But I'm still confused. Why did you put me here by me saying purpose in an insect? Dear Sylvie, there is purpose in everything. You wanted to go out of your way to help a creature unconditionally. You did not concern yourself with what anyone said. You had determination on your side. Best of all, a pure heart. You were exactly the person we sought. From careful planning, the Fairy Queen and I knew that you and Mr. Wogglebug would meet exactly where you did. And we knew that together, with the greatness and the two of you, Nothing was impossible. Also, your encounter with Antibo was inevitable. Which is why we brought you here. That being said, brings up my question. What happened to that scoundrel? Oh my! With all this excitement, we forgot about him! What in the name of all this holy? Mama! No! Not like this! Why? 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 Well, <laughs> it's about time he got a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> I concur. Tis a sight for sore eyes. Our menace finally gets what he deserves. <laughs> now that's funny. Well, Professor Know-It-All, you and the Fairy Queen knew this would happen? <laughs> well, I must be honest. Not entirely this way. But we knew that if anyone could stop him, it would be you two. That's a lot of pressure to put on a person. Well, of course. That's why we didn't tell you our plan. Fate played a giant role in this. Goodness prevailed over evil. The Fairy Queen and I have collected the Great Oak's sap while it was dormant and constructed a prison cell for Antibo. Even though it was sleeping, its powers was within and we found the sap 
help keep it alive now that it's been awoken by our lovely Sylvie and the team of guardians the great oak can help keep guard over our miscreant that is an outstanding idea professor know-it-all the fairy queen and you have really outdone yourselves to be honest Sylvie and you really did the outdoing with the help of the rest of these fine forest dwellers Bravo! A most appropriately happy ending. It's not quite over yet, actually. It's not quite over yet, actually. You, Mr. Wogglebug, have a great honor awaiting you. More than you'll ever know. More than you'll ever know. I... I have? Yes, indeed. For you have more than proven yourself worthy of all our respect and affection. You did it, kid. I always had faith. Truthfully, if it hadn't been for him, we would have never found it within ourselves to come here. He helped us all. Indeed. We also all learned to believe in our greatness because of him. Thank you. Gosh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> Oh dear me, I think I'm crying, but why? I'm not sad. <laughs> you're crying now because you're so happy. I cry because I'm sad. I cry because I'm happy. Crying is very confusing <laughs> and wet. Once we have Antibo uncomfortably in his prison, we must report to King Ethano. He'll be delighted to hear of our good news. And your majesties, that is just how it happened. Is it true, Sylvie? Yes, it is. It all happened just as he said. Then we have to thank you for saving not only the enchanted forest, but our kingdom as well. You've adequately demonstrated all the seven living values of intelligence living within you, and you deserve a seat in our society. I did. I mean, I did. How so? They happened all around you as you just went on your way. You showed courtesy, kindness, and honesty to all the residents of the forest, as well as loyalty to Sylvie. You proved you had courage and perseverance when you went through the mocking trees. Why, I believe you're right. Of course I did. I just wasn't really keeping score of myself. But what about the last of them? How did I achieve it? That is the very point. You just let Sylvie help you to achieve it. She helps you to understand Making mistakes is all just part of the journey of life. You've learned more now than you know when you started out. Of course, you're right. And that is just what the amazing journey of life is all about, as you have said often. You, Mr. H.M. Wogglebug T.E., have proved yourself worthy of my trust and esteem far more than any of the other dignitaries put together. You are a very rare and valuable being, and henceforth, I dub you my own trusted chief adviser to aid me in all state affairs. It is the highest honour I award. I thank you, Your Majesty. The pleasure is all mine. And you, Sylvia Noir, I trust you have the key that brought you here to Genoma. I forgot all about the key. Well, get it out, as it is finally time for you to use it again. The key can now unlock the very door to take you back to your own home. Just follow the light. Thank you, Your Majesty. But will I ever be able to come back? Of course, you will be able to come back someday. Only it may be through a very different portal than the previous one you came through. But no matter how you come again, 
It will always be because the time is right. Thank you, Professor. I really enjoyed my first visit here. Yes, thank you. I am grateful to you as well. I just don't believe it. I just can't believe he actually did it. Surely he must have just made it all up. He just wants attention after all. And how could he get the king to call him his good friend of all things? He never has done so for any of us. It's outrageous. I'll say. Whatever shall we do about it? Those fellows will come around eventually. Until then, I'll just let them pretend they don't know me. I think this is it. I'll miss you, Mr. Wacklebug. I'll miss you too, Sylvie. Until we meet again, of course. I love you, Mr. Wacklebug. I love you too, my dear Sylvie. But this was only the beginning. Sylvie would come back many times, and we would have even more exciting adventures together. I'm home. I missed you. I was only gone for an hour. As for me, I would have some unique adventures of my own in new places than I'd ever known of before. But that is another story to be told another time. <laughs> Believe in your dreams. Believe in all you can conceive. Believe and you will achieve. Believe and you will find all is more than it seems. Believe and you find all will be a gleam. Your imagination will reign supreme. Believe me and I will never leave. Believe me and you will achieve all the more than we imagined. Because of you, my life happened. You are the one to make me real. You are the one who can only feel the way I can only feel to be real. I should never be concealed, but only just be healed. You may go down the wrong road. You may lose your way and become lost. But if you will follow your heart, you will find a new day may unfold. You must go on no matter the cost. You must begin where you start. I am here with you. I am here to stay. As long as you will stay with me, all our dreams may come true. You and me can always start anew, and I will always come to play with...